We've been at sea for 18 days since leaving Mexico en route to the Marquesas on the biggest adventure of our lives. But after three weeks on the open ocean, time and sanity are beginning to blur. Today is day 18 of our passage to the Marquesas. And we have just under a thousand miles to go, which seems like such a short distance now. Before we started the sail, our longest sail was 10 days at about a thousand miles. And we thought that was massive. Just goes to show you how, how far we've come, I guess. The passage so far, it's just been full of ups and downs. I haven't been able to fully comprehend what we're actually doing. Our day-to-day -day life out here is pretty boring and it's really been interesting because we get up, we do sail changes, we eat, we sleep, we do very, very basic things. But at the same time, all of those basic things, we're doing something huge, something so big that, like I said, I, I can't fully comprehend what we're doing right now. Yeah, just so much to digest and so much to think about. It's, it's been a really wild ride. And my feelings have really been all over the place. I've had moments of wondering what the hell we're doing out here, wanting to, you know, turn around and jump a ship to feelings of just complete bliss. The brain just never shuts off. The slightest change of wind or hearing a sail or, you know, hearing um, a cup fall off a counter and you're like on edge, like, what was that? So mentally, it's been a bit of a challenge. I didn't realize that going into this. It's all part of this journey that we're on. Another day, fully overcast, but the wind's been pretty consistent. We've had a good 10 to 15 knots all day, so we haven't had to jive or tack or do anything. It's been kind of nice. No big squalls, just a little drizzle this morning, but pretty uneventful. We have yet to have a really nice sunset or sunrise just because it's been completely overcast and we're totally lacking in getting solar power. So we've had to run the generator a lot. I ran it for about three hours today just to charge up because our new hydraulic autopilot is a lot more power hungry than the old electromechanical one was, which is doing a great job. It just draws a lot of power, especially when we have no solar coming in. We've got 934 more miles to go and we're just along for the ride at this point, hopefully here in the Southern Hemisphere in the trade winds, zipping along. This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. We've been sailing around the world for three years and are constantly on the move from country to country. We're fortunate to have a Starlink internet connection on board OneLife. Having constant connectivity at sea has been absolutely amazing, but we never know where in the world our internet connection will be routed through. Sometimes websites we need from back in the US see that we're connected from around the world and block our access. Luckily, this issue is easily resolved by using Surfshark VPN. Simply open the Surfshark app, select your desired virtual location, click connect, and voila, access granted. Out at sea, we often crave the comforts of home, like being able to relax and watch our favorite show on Netflix. Unfortunately, Netflix has different catalogs of shows for different countries, but with Surfshark VPN, we can access the shows from the United States. All we need to do is choose a virtual location inside the US, and before the popcorn is ready, our show is on. All your devices are covered under one subscription and you can try it out risk-free with the 30 day money back guarantee. Sign up using our code sailing one life for three extra free months. You can find the link in the description below. All right, now back to sailing. It's 
so I've just noticed over the past few hours that the sea state is starting to settle down a little bit. And I think that has something to do with the current that we've been fighting against. So for the past maybe three or four days, we've been kind of fighting our way against what's called the equatorial counter current. And that's a west to east current that flows because of the trade winds. So the trade winds to the north and south are blowing out of the east and pushing the water on the surface to the west. And that water's got to be replaced. So what happens is water moves along the surface of the equator from west to east. And it's about a knot and a half current or so. And that slows us down. And it's also made for some short, choppy, confused seas because that water moving against the predominant wind direction out of the east just makes for not a very pleasant sea state. So hopefully we've got our, got our way through that now. And I've noticed too on our gauges that we're not fighting current anymore. So we measure our GPS speed, and then we also have a paddle wheel in the water that's measuring our speed through the water. And by comparing those two speeds, you can determine whether the current's against you or behind you or even on the side. So by looking at that right now, I've, I've realized that the current's a little bit behind us now and no longer right on the nose. So we're going a little faster, sea state's a little calmer, and hopefully it stays like this and we start to pick up the, the favorable current out of the east um, that runs with the trade winds a little bit south of the equator. But hopefully it's a nice calm night, just like it is tonight. Brooke's down getting a little rest and then she'll come up in a little bit and it'll be my turn to sleep. Hopefully no squalls to report, no problems, just a nice, easy, comfortable night sail tonight. day 19, I think. And we're gonna ask Gary how he thinks the provisioning has been going. Ew. Ew? It looks gross, but I'm sure it's amazing. <laughs> it's yogurt and granola, you guys. I thought it was a really nice, refreshing treat. <laughs> what would you rather instead? Cheese sticks. Gary wants cheese sticks and ice, ice cream. cream. That's all I've been hearing about the whole passage was how much he wants ice cream. Great, we're not starving. <laughs> Are we out of food yet? It's a little bit after midnight. Yeah, I know you guys can't see anything, but we've got a fish on. She's off. Oh yeah, all the way off. off. I'm in neutral. So we're basically hope to right now. And the time is 10, no, 12.25, which means Gary's been fighting this thing for 10 minutes now. Well, it came off, so that's a bummer. Time to get the sails back out and back on our night watches. Well, at least we got a little bit of excitement. <laughs> Hi guys, good morning. It's another cloudy day out here. Um, still hoping for that epic sunrise, but I haven't seen it yet. And I actually just made a cup of hot tea. It's the first caffeine or caffeinated drink I've had in a few days, just because I haven't been sleeping well at night. So I thought I'd cut caffeine out, but it doesn't seem like the caffeine has anything to do with it. I'm still really not sleeping that well. We're doing between five and six knots the past day or so and we have 732 miles to go and we have a whole lot of nothing happening again.
so that's good. I like the uneventfulness, um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing lands. I think we probably have maybe six days, six days to go. Breakfast time. Gary just put the fishing lines back out. Just getting into our daily routine here. It's not very exciting, but he just woke up. Just put the lines out. Lines are back out. So I'll make breakfast and then I'll go to sleep for a while. <laughs> Pretty exciting stuff. 723 miles to go. And we're doing about four and a half, five knots. <laughs> day 20 you guys <laughs> is it day 20 day 21 <laughs> we don't know more of the same it's insane <laughs> So we just played a few games of this new thing we invented called sea legs. You stand in the cockpit without touching anything and the first person to fall over loses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Victory is mine. Pretty entertaining. It's pretty much the most entertaining thing that we have to do right now. Between that and screaming over the loudspeaker, it's about all, all we can manage this afternoon. 700 miles to go. <laughs> we better hurry up and get there. <laughs> Are you tired of looking at me yet? No. I'm tired of looking at blue water. <laughs> Gray water? It's not even blue because of the clouds. Gray sky, blue water. I wonder if we'll be able to smell land. What do you smell right now? <laughs> Myself. <laughs> <laughs> My salty, crusty body. Tonight, Gary decided it best to bring in the lines before dark. Okay, so here is a day in the life of Brooke at sea. Um, I just finished up with my 4 to 8 watch and watched the sunrise. It wasn't very good. Um, it's been really, really cloudy here, and so it seems like we've not had a good one in a while. But I kicked on the generator because of the clouds. We've not had much solar. Uh, so I kicked that on, and now I'm going to start my morning routine. With the generator on, my first task was to turn on the water maker. 
I then filled up all our water bottles and put them in the freezer so we would have ice cold water throughout the day. Up next was washing the dishes from the previous night's dinner before cooking breakfast. These tasks all seem so minimal, but when living a rolly life at sea for weeks on end, completing the smallest of jobs is an accomplishment. We look forward to the little things, like having a warm meal and getting in a short nap. By the afternoon, we are both awake and spend our time lounging in the cockpit, reading, listening to podcasts, music, and contemplating life. It is actually a sunny day today, so that's amazing. It's the first sunny day we've had in quite a while. And the seas really have been about the same probably like seven to eight feet. Um, but we're still moving with the current, which is good. So we're making like six knots. It's just more of the same day in and day out of what we do here, <laughs> which I'm certainly not complaining about. It's nice. It's been a nice relaxing passage so far. So hopefully it stays like that for the next, what, five days for us. We have 565 miles to go. All right. Next up is shower time. We only do this like a couple times a week. <laughs> it's a pretty big deal. But since we ran the generator this morning, Gary made hot water, and although it's really hot, a hot shower is pretty nice. Shower pump on, water on. So showers are pretty fun because since we're healed over to the starboard side, all of the water um, seems to rush that way. So basically, we sit here so we don't fall over. And then you'll see all the water slides that way, which makes it pretty hard to pump out because our drain for the shower is over here. So it doesn't work well when all the water runs over that way and it pumps out here. So it's kind of a challenge. Okay, so this is what I mean about the water. You can see, you lean over and it all goes to that side. So when you pump it out, you have to wait until the boat rights itself a little bit to start pumping. So, like now. All part of life at sea. How's it going? Just watching waves. <laughs> Still watching the waves. It is already time to make dinner tonight. Again, the days go by fast, I guess, just because we're being lazy and I don't know. It seems like, it seems like we eat, we sleep, we read, we watch the waves and we repeat it. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna make us dinner before the sun goes down and we get settled into our night watches once again. almost a sunset tonight. Oh wow. It's a very, very little one. <laughs> So 
I'm up here on my night watch and I know that we talk about our night watches a lot but we don't really explain what we do during them. So Gary and I take four hour shifts on and off um, all day every day while we're out here and while we it's a big wave while we're on our watch basically what we do is we keep an eye on our wind gauges and our GPS um, so right now we're trying to maintain a heading of about 220 but we're also trying to keep the boat as balanced as possible so I'm keeping the wind between 90 and 120 but occasionally I need to adjust our course based on the wind angle and the direction we want to go so right now we're sailing at a direction of 202. Our bearing is 202, but we really need to point at 226. So I'm gonna slowly throughout the night try to um, point us more in that direction. But of course that depends on the wind. So that's one of the things we do. And then the other thing is we check to see if there's any boats on AIS. Um, we do have alarms set up to go off when a boat um, comes within like a 10 mile range of us. But as we found out the other night, um, not all boats have AIS out here. So we also scan the horizon about every 15 minutes to check for any lights or anything that looks out of the ordinary. And then lastly, we also keep an eye on our radar and look for any possible storms that we might need to adjust the sails or try to dodge the best we can. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Then the rest of the time is spent listening to a podcast, reading a book, um, watching a movie. And sometimes when we're feeling really tired, we'll set our alarm for every 15 minutes so we can snooze for a few minutes and then scan everything, look around, make sure everything's good. But yeah, that's pretty much what our night watch consists of. We have 454 miles to go this morning. And yeah, I just made a cup of hot tea. I'm getting ready to get off my night watch. Um, so I'm gonna finish listening to a bit of my book and then Gary should be awake in the next hour or so. But it feels really weird getting so close because it seems like the days are going a little bit slower now um, for whatever reason. I guess we're just really anxious to get there but we're still on the same tack with our Genoa out. We reefed it down a little bit last night. We've been reefing it at night just because we sleep better that way and um, it's a little easier to manage. And if a squall comes, then at least we're prepared for it. I definitely say that the lack of sleep is catching up to both of us. We've both had um, pretty bad headaches the past couple days and we think it's from just lack of sleep. And I don't know, we're still hopeful that we'll catch a fish. I don't know what we're doing wrong, you guys. <laughs> um, I don't know if we're just not in a fishy area or what, but Gary's been working his butt off on those reels, changing lures, making sure our lines are clean. And yeah, I don't know, I guess Neptune was mad because I threw back those wahi that we caught in the beginning of the sale. I don't know, but here's to another uneventful day on the water. It's pizza day! <laughs> Gary's gonna make us a pizza today and I'm gonna be the person to hold all the supplies down so they don't uh, tumble off the counter while he's making it. So it's step one, making the dough. This is actually one of the calmest days that we've had in a while. Um, so it's a good day for tackling the pizza.
is a happy girl right here. <laughs> this is definitely a highlight. Oh man, I know that this is a lot of work for Gary to do. Oh, I am so stoked for Pete today. Woohoo! As the sun set, we deployed the whisker pole and turned dead downwind. Only a few hundred miles of ocean remained between us and the Marquesas, and One Life was on course for the final stretch. A big thanks to all of you for joining us on this passage. We can't wait to share our next episode as we make landfall in the gorgeous Marquesas Islands. Be sure to check out Surfshark in the description below.